There are some people who thank me for making the videos that I make. And let me say this. The topics of the videos that I make, there is no way that would come to my mind unless it was God. So I have to give all credit to God for the topics I have explained because like there are times and I am serious there are times where I may be speaking to someone or watching something not watching something but doing something and all of a sudden like these topics comes to my mind and scriptures for the topics comes to my mind and you have to know that that is not me. I would say that that is God, not myself. Because like this topic that I am going to speak of now just popped right into my mind. So we are going to speak about or talk about how to get your prayers answered. And there may be some people who may be able to get their prayers answered. Some people may not know anything about prayers, but we are going to speak about it. Let's go to John 9 and 31. To the left is the King James Version. To the right is the Expanded Bible. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. So this is telling you Unless you repent of your sins, God is not going to consider your prayer. Now, God is going to hear everything. But what this is saying, God is not going to consider your prayer if you don't repent first and do his will, meaning follow his rules and regulations. So that's repentance is the first step. Okay. Let's go to John 15 and 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. So if ye abide in me, meaning what? You are following his rules and regulations. And my words abide in you, same thing. Ye shall ask what you will, you will ask what you want, and it shall be done unto you. So what this is saying, as long as you are following the rules and regulations of the Bible, you can ask for what you want as long as it is not sinful, like you can't ask God to rob a bank or you can't ask God if you can murder 10 people or something like that, you you can't ask God to bring someone right to your face so you can punch them. No, <laughs> those things are sinful. But for the non-sinful things, you can ask for them. So we see in John 9 and 31, we have to repent before we pray to God. Now, the thing I do, you see, I don't like to play games. I like to get straight to the point. I don't want to waste time. When I pray to God beforehand, I make sure I repent each time. Like, say if like when I begin to pray or before I begin to pray, I am going to repent first. And let's say I get done praying. And let's say 10 minutes later, I want to pray again. What I will do, I will repent a second time. And you may say, well, even if you did nothing wrong, you are going to repent a second time? Yes. Why? Because I want my prayers to be considered every single time I speak to God. So there are days where I will repent four or five times. <laughs> Not because I am doing things wrong, because I want to make sure that nothing is in my way when I pray. 
I pray that makes sense. So then we learned in John 15 and 7 that if you are following his rules and regulations, you can ask for what you will, as long as it is not sinful. Okay, let's go to Mark 11 and 24. Uh, yes. Good scripture. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. So, when you are praying to God, let's say that you are asking God to heal your back. Let's say that you have this bad back and you had this bad back for years. And so, you know, you have repented of your sins and you are living for God. You are following his rules and regulations. So in Mark saying, so in Mark, it is saying that now, since you have repented and now you are following God. Now, just pray for what you want and believe that you have it. But Kevin, I don't have it. This is why I am praying for it. When you pray for it, you are believing that you have it now. So let's say that you have this bad back and you pray to God and say, hey God, you know, I am believing I am healed right now. But at the same time, your back still have pain. So you can say to me, hey, Kevin, you know, my back still have pain and I am following God's rules and I have repented. So what is going on? It is faith. You have to have faith. You have to have faith. Faith connects you to the miracles of God because the. How could I say this? The covenant promise is right there. But what connects you to the covenant promise is your faith. So even if you don't feel, even if your back does not feel healed, you still have to believe that you are healed. Well, Kevin, that sounds crazy. I am trying to tell you <laughs> how to get your prayers answered and you are not listening. You can't think in an earthly way and believe that you will get far in God. You can't believe or do things in an earthly way and believe that you can get things from God. In order to operate more in God, you have to do things in his way, not the common knowledge, humanistic or human way. You have to do things the way that God wants things to be done. So what you think is wrong. Well, how can I believe that my back is healed when I still have pain? That is the whole point of faith. If your back is healed, then you won't need faith. Faith, you have to use faith when you don't have something. Faith, blind trust in, in God, connects you to the covenant promises of God. Along with obedience and... Yes, repentance and obedience. That is what connects you to the covenant promise of God, promises of God. I pray that makes sense. So what is faith? Faith is blind trust in God. So when you are praying, you are believing that you have it even when you don't have it. Because if you had it, then you don't need to use faith. I pray that makes sense. Why do I need to use faith if my back is healed? Like, hey, I prayed to God for God to heal my back and my back is healed now. So why do I need to use faith? 
because I already have it. You need to use your faith, your trust in God, your blind trust in God, when you don't have something that you are praying about. That is the whole point of faith. When you are believing, listen, Ooh. when you go to heaven or hell, there is no sense of time. Everything is present. Everything is now. So when you use faith, faith is now. I don't know if you all understand that. So when you pray, you are not praying, hey God, I believe that you are going to heal me soon or on your own time or in your own time. Where does it say in his own time? From what I am reading, therefore I say unto you what things soever ye desire, when you pray, you have to believe that I will do it in my own time. It does not say that at. Where does it say that at? That, that God is going to do it in his own time. When ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. It does not say in his own time. In order to get what you want, in order to get your prayers answered, you have to have faith. You have to repent of your sins before you pray to God. And you have to follow his rules and regulations. When a person says that, well, you know, I have prayed to God about this and this and that, and God is just going to do it in his own time, you know, I guess now is not a good time for me. That is a weak excuse for your weak faith. So you have weak faith, so you are making excuses for having weak faith. Faith is now. Faith is not a week later or a year later or whatever else. Faith is now. You are believing that you have it now. Even if you don't feel the effects of your healing for a week or two weeks or a year or whatever else. You are believing that you are healed now. I pray that makes sense. Because there are prayers that get answered. Now, when I pray, there are prayers that get answered quickly. There are prayers that takes a while. But either way... I am believing that everything is done now. Even if it takes 20 years, I am believing that it is happening now, that it is done now. Let's go to Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So what is the first word? Now. So. When is faith? Now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith does not have a timeline. There is no period of time for faith because faith is now. When you go to heaven or hell, everything is now, not uh, past or present. Or There is no timeline. Everything is now. I pray that makes sense. So what do you have to do to get your prayers answered? Okay. In John 9 and 31, what do you what do you have to do? You have to repent of your sins, right? Okay. John 15 and 7. What do you have to do? You have to follow his rules and regulations, right? Okay. Mark 11 and 24. You have to believe that you have received what you are praying for now. And Hebrews 11 and 1 is telling you what faith is. This is how you get your prayers answered. Right here. <laughs> I pray this makes sense, man. I pray. Because 
this is not really hard. Not really. Well, doing things the right way, I guess, can be hard, but hey. This is what you have to do here. I pray that this makes sense. God bless.